So good afternoon, everyone. We are going to be presenting Bayou Bustamante today with Matias. Um, as always, this will go up on our YouTube channel. So if anybody does need to leave in the middle or um, is unable to attend, then I will be sending this recording on to everybody afterwards and we'll have uh, time for Q&A at the end. Um, so Matthias, shall I go ahead and show uh, a short video and then I'll leave it to you for the, for the presentation. Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for everyone to be in this meeting. Okay. So, okay, Hi the idea is to the a small video. So you yeah. can get the atmosphere of our place. Yeah. Perfect, I'll show that now. Um, so hopefully everybody will be able to see that. Well, there we have a nice kind of atmospheric feeling of what Bayevo Samante is all about. Oh, I think it's playing again in the background. <laughs> It's on a loop. I like it so much. And as you can see from my picture behind me, this is also a picture of um of that incredible coastline you just saw in there in that video. It's just, yeah, it seems like a wonderful place to be. And so Matias is there and um he is now going to present a little bit about the product of um by Bestamante for you and the history behind this amazing lodge. Over to you, Matias. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I'm not very good in in technology, but I will try to do it. Uh, wait. Yeah. So, everyone can see it now? The presentation? Not yet, I'm afraid, Matthias. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, wait. Maybe we cancel. And I will start again. Sorry. Dana. Yeah. Come on. That's better. That seems to be working. You can see it. Almost. You can see the presentation. Yep. We can see the presentation now. That's great. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Bayo Bustamante, it's 
in the coastline in Patagonia, in Argentinian Patagonia, no? and uh, we are like in a remote area, and it's a place that it's like a, a big sanctuary, uh, wildlife sanctuary, no? uh, especially marine sanctuary. So uh, here all around this area, we have 50 islands, and they, when the New York Times here, no, they call it like a, an answer to the uh, Argentina's private and secret answer to the Galapagos. No, so they came in 2013, and and it was like a big thing, no? a big article. So uh, we have a lot that we started in 2005 and uh, it's uh, we started with in, in the beginning my family was here he, they arrived in 1950 to this area and they were working in a seaweed industry and they built like a small town that you can you will have it later uh, you will see it later and so well this uh, in this area there is like a very nice marine sanctuary that they are full of islands and we can see uh, many different uh, wildlife no it's it's not difficult to arrive uh, we have different connections uh, we have connections from Comodoro Rivadavia airport or Trelew airport that it can take you between two and a half hours to three hours to arrive here. We are near Peninsula Valdez, that I think that most of the of you know it, and we are like 350 kilometers south of Peninsula Valdez. No, so <clears throat> then also we have connections like uh, to Mendoza area or to Calafate and Ushuaia area, area no? and obviously to Buenos Aires. So you can fly uh, very easy and connect to different uh, uh, areas in Buenos Aires, in Patagonia. Also, uh, well, as I told you, this was founded by my grandfather in 1950. The only house that was here is the one you are watching uh, in the screen. And it all started like a seaweed uh, uh, business, no? In the beginning, it was all with uh, wagons pulled by horses, no? And it was like a very uh, handcraft work, no? They used to live up to 400 people and to work 400 people plus some family you know we used to have a church a school uh, and we we used to have a church a school uh, a police station and so it start started growing all the all the town all the, well the town we call it town because it was like a small village you know but it's all a private place it's like a private estancia you know and here you can see this is the only building that uh, it was built when my grandfather came and then uh, well he he did all this uh, estancia no this ranch uh, here you can see the church you can see here the school and well many different buildings <coughs> so at Pustapante, we have many different activities. Uh, one of the highlights is uh, the navigation. When we get the, the boat, it comes here from the point number one, and we visit 10 islands all around these 10 islands. We can see a lot of different uh, birds, uh, a lot of different, uh, well, uh, penguins, we, and sea lions, no? Also, uh, 
here we can see up to 4,000 sea lions no? in the breeding season. In winter, we can see six, 600 sea lions. And this was, uh, this was protected always by the family. And later, the, this area, uh, it's in a national park and a, a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. No? Then, uh, well, in the navigation, we have a small cut where a catamaran, no? And we go around the islands. This is the harbor where we are going out. And we visit, no? You can see all the wildlife there, thousands of sea lions. And this is a very important area for birds. Uh, for I, I, I know that birding is a big thing in the UK, you know? and here of the 17 marine birds that they are in Argentina, uh, they, here they breed 13 of the 17. So, well, it's a very important area. You know? And, and well, uh, there are endemic birds like this. It's called a steamer duck. It's a flightless duck. No? Then different cormorants, well, egrets, a lot of penguins. They are, when we go around the islands, we can see uh, around 100,000 penguins. No? Another activity is going around the peninsula, where there are lovely beaches. We go by trucks. We have these Land Rover trucks, or you can go by bicycle or do trekking. To walk around the peninsula, uh, to the point of the peninsula, will take you about two hours. So it's a very uh, nice place to be walking on the beach. No, here. Uh, some beaches on the peninsula. The water is very, very crystal and very pristine. You know? We are out of these pollution areas. You know? And there are many tide pools all around the coastline. So, well, it's very easy to, to hang over in that tide pools. Also, we have uh, ar archaeological places where it's very interesting where they, they used to live the, the the first settlers that they are, were in this area that they are the Tehuelche Indians the Tehuelche Aborigines no? also we do horseback riding no and uh, another activity we have in our ranch a petrified wood forest that is 65 million years old. That uh, one of the nicer things of this petrified wood forest is the colors of this petrified wood forest. It's very colorful. It's not a uh, brown and gray, no. And then we have a small penguin island that you can see here that it's number four where we cross uh, we go with the tracks there and then with low tide we cross to the penguin islands and we see how they breed how they nest no uh, like in many other uh, continental uh, penguins uh, colonies but well uh, it's important that here you have a, a lot of penguins for yourself, no? Not not to share with a big number of people, no? And and when you go by the boat, you can see these uh, penguins. Like this is like a penguin pool that we have, where you can see the penguins swimming and going around and going down the boat. They are very curious, and I, I think this this is marvelous. And, and you cannot see it in any part of Patagonia. The, the way we we see it, 
uh, uh, from the boat. No? Well, the step also, we are looking to the step, and this is also, uh, you will find a lot of things in the step. No? Uh, here you can see that it looks like very empty, but it's very marvelous and contemplative. No, the step. Uh, some of the some of the animals you can see they are lesserias, the Patagonian hare that is called the mara, the uh, foxes, the guanacos, no, and also armadillos and different uh, wildlife. Also, in the south of the cove here, we can see, uh, we, we call it like the safari in Bayoustamante, that we go around the Aristizabal Cape and we see mainly all that wildlife I show you, no? the steppe wildlife. Also, we are going around the coast, so uh, you will see a lot of marine wildlife also. And in, like 10 years ago, uh, an artist that uh, it's called uh, Christian Liberté Voltansky, that he just died a couple of years ago, uh, he did this uh, uh, artist uh, and he put like these horns, he call it like the horns, that was the way that uh, there was a whale that uh, a dead whale, you no, know, that we, it's near this uh, area and it was a connection with these uh, horns, the, the, the skeleton would be uh, connected by these horns with the other whales. No? That was the idea of this. So, well, here we have this historic tour. Uh, that it's, we try to do it when the guests, they arrive or, or the first day. So they, they know about the, all the story and how hard it was this uh, in the beginning. But also, well, then later they, they feel like very comfortable to walk around the area and and well and we explain how was the seaweed harvesting and and and, and everything uh, the, how how it used to work the the small estancia no the small place here also we have a, a a ship uh, activity. Uh, we do. We work with uh, ten thousand sheep. We do uh, a restoration of the grasslands, a regeneration program, and I don't know if you know holistic management. We work with the holistic management, and uh, well, uh, when we we are we try to do this uh, regeneration of the grassland program no so well the lodging the lodging of the place <clears throat> you can see that this like it's one of the best things i think uh, if if we divide the the screen on the left most of these houses on the left they are the guest houses so uh, here we have some new, uh, we call them marine loft that we just finished res the restoration. Then we have some step houses here. There's uh, the sea cabins here and here. And then we have the old grocery that it's like the restaurant and living room that we have here. And uh, now we are like uh, two, three years ago after the pandemic, we bought all the ranch with our brothers to the rest of the family. So we have like a six, like a five year project. No, we are trying to do some projects. 
uh, to to do uh, a restoration of this place. No, uh, here in the front now it's all full of vines. No, where uh, it's the as there are sea vines. No, there are special, very special uh, wines that we get from here. And in this area here on the right of the screen, on the beach, now we are going to make the, uh, the area we are going to produce the vines. And in the rest of the building, we are going to do like a place for weddings, etc. We, we have a, an accommodation maybe of 50 guests maximum. So we want to maintain this uh, small quantity of guests. That, that is if they are all the four houses, all the houses full, no? So this is our new uh, houses, this marine loft that we just restored. We finished them uh, one month ago. Uh, so they have like a, a big room, a living room, no? And they have also, well, a very nice heating uh, and a nice bathroom and a small kitchen. These ones, they look to both sides, to the, to the ocean and to the steppe. And they have very big uh, windows, so you can appreciate both areas. Some horses in the steppe. And then we have the sea cabins that they are just very near the ocean they have a nice living room they have a kitchen for uh, heating a coffee you know they have a mini bar and they have two rooms you no know? one with an ocean view and one with a step view <coughs> It's very important also for us <clears throat> to, uh, we have a, a nice orchard and we try to put everything from the garden to the table. All, uh, not only we have uh, vegetables, we have all, also fruit trees, we have uh, olives, <clears throat> now we have wines. So, it's, we have a uh, honey, we have one of the southest honey uh, from the world, we have hives, no? and so it's very special for us also the, uh, to take everything to the table. No? Well, these nets are because of the roosters, we have uh, hens and roosters. And we try to produce uh, most of the things we take to the table. The cooking, we have two chefs that they were here. And we can say it's a, a nice, uh, uh, nice meals that we have here in this uh, old grocery that is the restaurant. Nowadays is the restaurant, and here also there is, there is a nice living room that you saw it in the in the video. And all they have like an ocean view, no? Well, we have this ocean mines pro project. That it's not a project now; it's uh, it's real. We started in 2018 like a project and now we have the uh, this year we're going to make the fourth harvest no? and well bustamante now it's like 90 95 percent is provide uh, the energy by all solar panels we only turn on one hour a day the the engine to protect mainly to protect all the 
the, the big investment we did with the batteries. No? So, and then we have uh, most of the heating uh, water. It's in of the hot water. It's heated by solar panels. And and well, uh, well, I'm doing this Zoom from from outside the restaurant. So we have a, a Wi-Fi uh, a, uh, that it's it works quite well. And and well, this is uh, like just in front uh, the the vines. No, you can see also wildlife all around the place. No. So well, that's the idea. To I will go back. Let me check to finish the presentation, and we can see you again. It's okay. You can see me now, Nicola. Yes, that was yes. fantastic. Thank I'm you, back. Matthias. And if anybody would like so, to show their video and ask Matthias any questions, then please go ahead. Uh, Matthias, can you give us a little? Um, view of where you are um let's see if we can see where you are well, and, and what your what your view is there right. that would be great well just here we are just in front of the grocery we can see the line of the houses i don't know if you can see it that's the ocean just in front making like a 360 you can see the vines there. Yeah. That's the the future uh, place to get a wedding. Or fantastic! Is, it looks it looks amazing. Yeah. I hope everybody can see that and has pinned um, Matthias's video to your screen because it's it's such a very very special place and particularly as this amazing history of Matthias and his family his grandfather who founded it as a seaweed plantation and is now in this really incredible eco lodge um so yeah caro is here taking answering questions in the chat i can see so caro is the as i mentioned at the beginning the reservations manager um so we've got um minimum stay three nights but we always recommend four because well, what do you think, Carol? Why why would you stay four instead of three nights? Uh, you might have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we recommend four nights because it's uh, a lot of uh, activities to do to contemplate nature and um, and stay connect. We we try to 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 get to our guests to stay connected with the, with the nature and, and um, hear the sounds, uh, contemplate and, uh, and, stay, uh, and stay with them. Yes, I think that when you come here, I think when you come here, if you come three nights, that will be around two full days or two and a half full days. And I think it's important for the guests to get uh, the atmosphere of the place. If you will be running, and running, doing activities, and I think also it's a place like to calm down and disconnect and disconnect. No. Yeah. Great. Um, there is another question. Either Caro or Matthias, can you explain what the board and package inclusions are? So, what is the all-inclusive package? What does it include? Oh, sorry. Um, we have two uh, in marine marine loft and uh, cabins. We uh, the the option is full board, and in step in the step cabins we have the possibility to uh, arrange only lodging. So you can uh, buy the activities and full uh, and food uh inside or you can make your own food in the step cabins but the rest of our, the the, the lodgings sea cabins and uh, marine loft we have the full board uh, package and that includes activities as well doesn't it two yes. two half day activities generally yes and with those boat rides that matthias was talking about earlier he's the one who normally navigates those so you'll have matthias as your 
Capitan, <laughs> you're going out to see the penguins, which is always a really nice touch. Um, and yeah. your wife Astrid is normally there as well. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it today, but um, she's there doing doing other things like managing the farm and things like that, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She always helps us with the well, also with all these wolf volunteer programs that we work with, and also. Oh, well, all their uh, uh, vegetable garden, and also she makes, she helps us with all the communication uh, area. Right. Um, does the full board include drinks, Caro? Uh, no, only spring water. And um, if you want to uh, to take another drink, you have to buy it in in, in Bahia Bustamante. Okay. Um, and do you accept you accept credit cards and that that's okay to pay with card, right? Yes, yeah. credit card and, and, and cash are accepted. Um, do many guests self drive, and are there transfers available from the lodge? So yes, I... we we, we well, I don't <laughs> cut up. No, that's uh, fine. But yes. Uh, many, many guests they arrive here so transfer. It's very easy. It's very easy to to, to rent a car and, and from the airport and arrive here. Uh, mainly it's all uh, pavement road. Then we have 30 kilometers of gravel road. That it's the road number 28. That it's a provincial road that is very well maintained, and so it's very easy. Also, you can. We, uh, we have transfers uh, that we can do it ourselves or we do it with other, other uh, people that we know. So you can outsource these transfers and they will be extra. And then how can you remind me how many kilometers <coughs> your road is from the main road to the lodge? It's a, it's a 35 kilometers away from, from the main road. Yeah. Um, and yes, Caro, you said that... Sorry. Sorry, and just when you get, when you turn the the main road, uh, in those thirty five kilometers, you are in our ranch also, but also you you start feeling the experience. No, you will see all the big quantity of guanacos and and well or foxes, and you are getting down from this uh, road that it's so over four hundred meters. Uh, uh, from the step and going down to the ocean, no? So, yeah, it's, I remember it's, it's so it's, beautiful. And so, would you yeah. recommend that people had four by fours for that journey, Matthias? Because it's it's ripio, right? It's it's quite bumpy. Look, uh, you you can come in the smaller car you can rent, or you can come in a four by four. Okay. Uh, the, the gravel road is very good. Yeah. Good to know. So, Caro, you said there's no whales at Bahia Bustamante. I think, yeah, we, we knew that. Can you explain a little bit about why and, you know, perhaps if people want to combine with one night in Puerto Madryn? Yes, when, uh, if you want to see whales, the, the, the season is from uh, October, uh, October to mid-December. Uh, so you can stay one night, one night at Peninsula Valdez. Uh, see whales and then come to Bahia Bustamante and see the uh, the the other animals, penguins, sea lions, uh, in uh, with, with only a few people around you and not uh, that the same as Peninsula Valdez in this this season. Uh, we are open to all uh, um, to October first October to uh, end of March. This season we will stay open 10 more days in April. So if you have clients to want to come, are they are welcome to uh, April. Yes, in this in this area, we, we see whales, no? Uh, but the, the perfect place to see the southern right whale is in Puerto Pirámides area, no? And, and Puerto Madryn area. In Peninsula Valdez here, uh, usually maybe one whale it passed, but you we we cannot 
be sure. But yes, every year we are seeing more and more another kind of whales that they are like the humpback or the fin whale or the say whale that usually we see them more in summer. Usually we see them uh, and, and we see them just when you go to the end of the peninsula or the Cape, you see all the, you see the whales and how they blow, you know, everything but like very near the, the coastline. Uh, but well, that's another experience, no? It's another kind of whale, not the same whale that it's, you see them from very near, like in Peninsula Valdez area, no? Great. So yeah, they're there, but not guaranteed. So um, what are the calmest months in terms of wind? When is it less windy? And what's the best season for wildlife? October, November, or the whole season? <laughs> well, every season has... Uh, the, oh, not wind. No, no. Wind, wind especially in this in this uh, season that is our spring. Uh, usually, spring it's quite windy, and then like if, maybe for the birders when they they like a lot to come like in November, beginning of December because the birds. They are nesting, so they are more, more calm. But then in December or for New Year, it starts all the all the birth of the sea lions, no, and all the copulation in January. Uh, so it's explodes. It's very uh, brutal, all the thing, no, and then. Uh, also, it's very nice to see the penguins arriving to the beach, the the penguin, the penguin chicks in 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 last days of December, beginning of of January. So, and and in the climate, if we are talking about the climate, uh, it's very nice for me. The best time is since the fifteenth of February to 15th of April. Uh, that's the biggest, uh, maybe the nicest uh, time, no? that it's uh, less wind in this area. No? Okay. And you get the fledging, the fledging chicks at, in that time as well, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. And also you see a lot of migratory birds that they are going to the North Hemisphere, no? And so well, it's, uh, every 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 season has his secret and his atmosphere. No? Yeah. Um, Sarah's asked um, the the newly opened marine lofts look great. Um, and are you are there any plans to renovate the sea cabins in a similar style? <clears throat> uh, yes, we as I told you, we are doing this. Uh, like five-year project, no? Uh, next year we are going to restore the restaurant because we know we need a bit more space uh, because the marine lofts they are all full board, so we need a and the living room also. So we are always one of the secrets or one of the. I don't know secrets, but what are of the things I love from Bustamante is to keep the atmosphere, no? Yeah, but so I was going to say, because I love the restaurant for the Almacen look, you know, the original features of the property. So I hope you're not going to lose like, any of that. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, 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 no. Good. We are not going to build to a two or three floor building. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and one of the secrets of Bustamante this is this was built like an industrial thing no and we don't want to lose that atmosphere one of the nicest things is that every guest has his own cabin you are not in a hotel where you go out to a big uh, uh, pasillo i don't know how you read a corridor yeah uh, to a corridor no if you go out to the 
to 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 the ocean and to nature no so and if you want you can stay in your house or in the terrace of your house with your family but also if you want to meet people you can come here to the living room or to do this uh, terrace that where i'm here now so it gives you well you can be independent or you can stay like more in a group and always we say that the houses uh, they are correct houses they are nice houses but the lux the luxury of the Valle Bustamante you will find it uh, outside the houses and we the, the beds and the linens they are very nice and also the the food the food is very nice also no right i hope that answers your question sarah um there haven't been any other questions come through but as i say i will be following up with an email and so if there's any other questions that i can certainly put you in oh. touch with caro or matias and if you want to visit if anyone's heading this way then do let us know we would love to get more people over there um it really is a very very special place and um, being so close to these huge national parks is one of the first marine national parks in South America. Um, and they've got 40,000 40, hectares at their disposal for exploration. So anyway, thank you so much, um, oh, Christian. Um, booking via DMCs. So all Argentina DMCs know about my Postamante. Um, and if they need any more information, then they can come through us or you can come through us or Caro. And we can we can help with that, but they will have the rates as well, and um, I can, I will be sending the rates and fact sheets and photos along, along with that. Right, um, thanks so much, Matthias. The internet was brilliant. Very happy about that, and um, yeah, it was a lovely thanks, lovely guys. presentation. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks very much. Have a fantastic season. Thank you. Okay. Oh, very there's much. one more. Thanks. There's one more yes. thing I wanted to put in the chat box. I hope everybody gets this. This link here, everyone click on that because that is an aerial exploration of Bayo Bustamante. And so have a little play around with that um, after this presentation so you can explore the whole place. It's, can, it's made up of drone pictures and drone videos of, of the property. So everyone enjoy that. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. And um, we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much, and I hope to see everyone here at Payo Bustamante. I think we need to come here to feel the, the mood of this place. Perhaps we will do a fam trip at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matias. Bye-bye. Thanks.